Hey, today on Kevin from JJ Hat Center, it's going to be like a do-it-yourself day. We're going to uh, work on um, getting the wrinkles out of your hat band. Okay, that comes from stacking hats. The hat on top pushes the band of the hat below. So your hats are all the same size. If you had an extra large on top of a medium, it would be fine. But since they're all mediums, top one squishes the band below. So you get these things and you get these things. Or worse. Uh, so this is pretty bad. You also get uh, the corners. See? These flip down to all the corners and stuff. And edges. Um, you can fix this stuff. You know, you could do it with steam if you have a steam and just like a brim brush, you know, like a flat brush. Just brush it upwards as you steam. Uh, it doesn't get rid of everything though. It gets rid of just the, like, the really fine stuff and it makes it look like, you know, 20, 50% better or whatever. You can't really steam out deep creases like this, but today we're going to show you how to get rid of it, okay? So, thank you. Um, these are not really hats I take good care of, so I'm going to uh, tell you right here. These are hats that I toss around the, uh, the bedroom. I've had them between, I don't know, 15, 20 years, maybe 18, 20 years, something like that, I'm not sure. But um, I know that they're one steam away from being fine, so it never really bothers me. I could always bring it into work, steam out the crown round, you know, do my secret trick to the band there. It's not so secret, a lot of you probably know it already. Uh, if you fast forward it to the end of this video and you see me you know, talking about it, then you, you cheated and you already know the trick. But anyway, we're going to fix it today. And um, my wife is out. Uh, she's over at a, doing something for her work. Uh, and uh, my son is at grandma's. So looks like today I've got the house to myself. <laughs> it hasn't been like this in maybe six months. <laughs>
simple to get rid of those little wrinkles. I think there's probably a whole bunch of you guys who know this already, but there's probably a bunch of you who don't know it. Um, Alright, what you do is you get yourself two paper towels. Maybe you get one and two. You know, you get like, I don't know, two or three and you fold them up into like a nice you know, little square or whatever. It doesn't matter. What you're going to do is you're going to keep one <coughs> excuse me Keep one wet, mm -hmm. one's going to be dry. Mm -hmm. So you're going to wet this. Remember, plain paper towel, no coloring on it, no little designs. It's got to be white, it's got to be brand new and nice and clean. Okay? What you're essentially going to do is you're going to wet the paper towel, most of it. Don't soak the whole thing so it's dripping and dripping. Try to make it so it's not dripping. No. You're going to dab this band and wet the whole band. If you have a wind cord on it, you know, take the wind cord away. Get it off. Okay. What you are going to do is wet the entire band with this. You're going to see it getting darker. So, dark, dark, dark. Make sure the entire thing is saturated. Okay. Now, the other one. Remember I told you to get this one. The dry paper towel is to catch the drips that are going to go this way or this way. You might get an occasional little drip. You might get a lot of drips. Just catch it. Mop them up. It'll just soak it up and they'll disappear like a race. So in other words, anything that falls off the band gets onto the brim here. You want to catch it. Just dry it. Might happen up here too. Dry it. Okay. Anything on the band is fine. All right. The idea is the entire band must be saturated, completely wet, you know, not dripping, but just, you see that it's dark brown, that it's, you know, not like a little splotchy. You want to cover the whole thing so it's one even dark color. Everything, okay? Catch those drips with the dry one. Next, you know, you might have to dip the water, you know. When you get to the bow, do the bow too. Get the bow. Alright, if you have something like this little fold over thing here, sorry, okay. As it gets wet, you could start holding it. And you're gonna see it's gonna start staying. You could pin it down like that. Okay. If that dries funny, it doesn't dry the way you like it ends. This part dries a little bit curled. What you have to do is just go back with a little bit of steam on there. Hit it with some steam. Your, your kettle is going like this, teapot. Get it in front of the teapot so that the steam is hitting that part. Just hit it, you know, the steam's not going to hurt your head. Hit it so that this part gets, you know, nice and hot from the steam. On what? Pull it away from the steam and then hold it. Hold it down nice and firmly while it dries. And you might have to walk around like this for like, you know, three or four minutes or something. But, um, you know, I'm going to walk around with it for a minute, whatever, but it's not a big deal. Um, essentially what's happening is it's tightening, it's shrinking. So if anybody knows about drum skins, that's the way they used to tune drum skins that were, you know, not the modern type that you have keys and hardware to tighten up with, you know, like an Allen wrench. The old-fashioned drum skins that were made from, like, you know, animal skins and stuff, you know, like goats and lamb skin and stuff, those were just pulled over, you know, some kind of wooden ring or something. You know, you see them, the, the African and, you know, the, uh, the ancient drums and stuff, you know. Um, they're just pulled over, and there's no way to tune them, you know, like they don't have sticks to tune them or some kind of mechanism. You tune them by wetting them, so... Wetting them, putting in the sun, will dry it, and the uh, the skin gets tighter. From boom, 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 beep, 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 it gets tighter. So, same thing here. All this stuff will just, you know, disappear. It'll tighten up, shrink somewhat. Um, 
really big gaps. I mean, like if you have something like, you know, like that, it's not going to shrink. Okay? The big gaps, you got to do something a little bit more. There's a little bit more involved there. Things like this, yeah, they, they'll disappear. But if you have, you know, a band with like some kind of huge gap like that, that's it, just too much. It's, it, it'll shrink, you know, that much or something, but it won't shrink all the way. First of all, make sure that the hat is round, that it's not the, uh, the crown, that it is the band, you know. Round out the crown, you know, stuff it a little. And um, if you have a lot of looseness, too much slack, what you basically have to do is open up these two stitches here couple of stitches. There's one there and there's one there on each corner. You can see them. Yeah. Stitch one, stitch two. You get a razor behind it and you just saw. Razor blade behind it. Saw it. Flip this up. Peel it back. Okay. There'll also be a stitch holding this thing down underneath there. What you might have to do is cut the stitch pull it tight what I generally do is while the the bow is you know out and loose and stuff I pull this tight and I tape it once I get it nice and taut I take a little piece of like masking tape scotch tape doesn't matter something nice and thin that you're not going to see through it and I just I just tape it down and I just cover the whole thing with the bow the tape is underneath there no one will ever see it it's easier than using a tack stitch to tighten it. Now, those of you who are good at sewing, basically, yeah, you just take this, any stitches that are at the end, you, you cut them and you pull it tight. You could temporarily tape it, then sew it down, sew it down, tack it down, and then pull off your tape if you want to. Um, taping works for me. I just tape, tape the, uh, the band in place, and then these two stitches will hold it. So in other words, tape it to keep it taut, you know, the right amount of tightness. Then put your bow back and make your tack stitches there and there. And that will be your, your stitches that keep the band strong and tacked on. The tape doesn't matter anymore because it's on the other side of the stitches. So um, that's what I generally do. Cut these two stitches, peel the bow back, you could hold that back with something, whatever, you know, a, a clip, or uh, doesn't matter. You don't have to hold it back. You could even use a little piece of tape. But, um, yeah, you're going to have to pull this piece tight, tape it down so it remains tight while you're sewing, and then just remember, sew here and here. Uh, generally, you know, you're going to have a knot at the end of your... You have a needle and thread and then a knot at the end. So you always want to start on the inside so that the knot will be here, not showing. So you start on the inside and then you work your way out of those corners. You know, you feel for it. Once you feel that you're in the right place, you poke it through. And then you go right back into itself, kind of, you know, a tack stitch, which is like, like a tiny quarter of a millimeter away, you know. So you're making kind of like little tacks like that. You go in, out, in, out. With you tie your thread down in here and make sure you don't go through this leather. That's a common mistake when you're sewing. You spike the leather and stuff. Don't do that. And as you can see on the inside of hats there are stitches, you know, knots and stuff. It's no big deal. It's under the sweatband. It's raw there. So if you get some stitches there, it doesn't matter. That's all hats are like that. The only reason you can see it now is because I don't have a lining. So all those things are under the leather and under the silk lining. They'll never be seen. But yeah, that's it. That's how they sew on the band. That's how they sew on the wind cord and everything. It's all raw under there. So you start there. You know, you sew. When you're finished, you got a nice big knot. You know, what I'll do sometimes with the knot is I'll even cover the knot with a little tiny piece of silver duct tape, like a little square. Um, I don't know why I do that. I do it so I feel like it's extra strength. But I generally only do that with uh, wind cords. I give it like a really good, when I'm sewing on a wind cord, really, really good stitch, you know, like a double, triple, quadruple. Just keep making that stitch kind of uh, 
stronger and stronger, and then I'll cover it with a little piece of duct tape when I'm finished. Kind of feel like uh, it, it gets jostled less, you know. Uh, you have the lining, your head's there, you don't want your head like messing with all those stitches and stuff or feeling them. So sometimes I'll cover it to a big stitch like that one quart stitch. Otherwise, probably not necessary. Um, that's it. Uh, you can put it on the like a sunny uh, windowsill or something if you want to dry it. You know, get some. Uh, I generally put a fan on it if I want to dry something a little quicker. That's also good too. Um, I'm going to say if you're dust, very dusty, your band is dusty, before you wet it, get a brush, brush it down, a soft brush, whatever you can to, you know, whatever you can do. If you have some kind of chamois or something, you know, just go up with the grain, get the dust out of those little crevices in the grow grain, you know. Dust it any way you can if it's dusty because you don't want to put water on there if it's really dirty. The water plus the dirt might make some kind of a uh, cloudiness or something. But yeah, just any time you're spraying anything on a hat, stiffener or water, it's good to make sure it's relatively dust free, you know. That is that. Um, I'm going to probably play down now. It's a little bit of a uh, short video, I guess. Let's see what we can do. Try this on your hat if you have some wrinkles. It's it's really common. You know, sometimes we don't like to set a, send a person home with a wet hat, so we don't do it. Um, you know, when people walk in, but it's something you can do. You know, if you're leaving your hat overnight, you know, we'll we'll do that just as a courtesy. If we see some wrinkles, we'll get rid of them. What it really comes down to is don't stack your hats. If you gotta stack your hats, put something between them. Either a ring, I showed you how to make a ring out of like a belt of, of uh, foam or cardboard. Make that little belt, loop it around, and then just go hat ring, hat ring. That protects the bands, so the hat basically is standing on that ring, not resting on the hat itself. So you could do little stacks of hats. If there are rings in between each hat, or cellophane, something like that. You could use some kind of a, a divider, like really soft uh, cellophane. Uh, you could use like uh, garbage bags, the ones that they use uh, like in an office. I forgot how many gallons that is, whatever, you know, the small size. You could just sort of uh, cover the crown with them. What I'll do is I'll cut, cut them in half and make little dust covers. The idea is you don't want to tie it up and keep a hat completely sealed in plastic, but you can cover you know, the crown and, you know, the top of the brim with plastic. And that way the second hat that goes on top of that won't be squashing this band, okay? Also, this hat is dust-free. So uh, if you lost your dust cover from your hat box, um, that's something you could do. Put it in that, you know, the dust cover that I just said you can make. You just cut a garbage bag in half or just use one of those smaller garbage bags, cover the crown, okay, and then once it's covered, then put it inside the hat box. Okay, so that way your, your box is elevated by the ring on the hat box, it's upside down, and the crown, you know, a good deal of the brim is covered by plastic, so you're, it's getting less dusty and stuff, because dust does get inside boxes. Uh, I mean, a box will keep your hat way less dusty, but if you don't have a dust cover on it, eventually it gets in somehow, I don't know, it just does, but um, yeah, 
mostly I think it's to protect the hat against scratches from the cardboard ring it's sitting on. Um, it's a uh, yeah, it's like a buffer between the uh, the hat box and the hat. All right, not much more I could say on the subject. <laughs>